We'll throw them on the altar, sprinkle them with all this oil and holy water and smack them on the head and make them, you know, spin around in three circles. talk about today is my partner really a believer is my partner really a believer and I have a love letter to read to you and many of you who listen to me know that the love letter means I'm reading your relationship questions and you can send your relationship questions to info at wisecourtship.com that's i-n-f-o the at symbol w-i-s-e C-O-U-R-T-S-H-I-P dot com. And so I'm so excited to read this letter to you. I'm going to try to read it on my screen. Mm -hmm. And we're going to get into it, okay? It says, I have been dating this guy seriously for a year. We have talked about marriage and we were even looking at rings. Due to certain recent events, I have come to realize that my hope for his Christianity to grow stronger is probably never going to happen. I love this man with all my heart, but I also need a husband who will pray with me, have a heart for God, who will want to go to church and make decisions by praying and learning on God. We have talked about this uh, and what my needs are, but he's not sure if he will get there. Do I hold on and hope through my actions and life? He will learn how to walk with God fully, or should I let him go and try to find someone else? Wow. Mm -mm. This one's going to be good because you're not going to want, look, you're not going to want to walk away. I'm going to give you a little bit, go get something to drink, go get something to eat. We're about to dig deep into this one. And I'm really excited about this. I don't get these kind of questions often. I am a Christian myself. Many of you know that. Um, but oh, some of y'all just got scared, didn't you? Oh my gosh. Really? Don't be so prejudiced. Good grief. All of us are not the same, honey. So you, I would like for you to give me a chance if you knew, because people will turn you off, click, 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 boom. And you don't even know me from a can of paint. All right, I'm here to help you. Remember, I'm here to help you. All right. <laughs> so just relax. All right. We in here for the long haul. But I think we can learn something from this. Even if you're not a Christian, put your faith in that box okay so christianity islam buddhist hindu i mean whatever just put catholic put yours and jehovah witness seven day Adventist. put yours in it church of god and christ put your religion in it or put your expectations in here i think there's something you're going to learn from this even if you're not religious whatsoever you know i'm the type of person i feel like i can learn something from every scenario but you know there's some people who are not grown up enough if they hear something they don't like they out you can learn something from every situation actually that's what makes you strong you don't have to make the same mistakes you could just look at people's lives honey and learn a great lesson of what to do and what not to do mhm mm can i get an amen on that Oh, yeah. So anyway, let's get into this letter. I've been dating this guy seriously for a year. And you know, this is why dating is so important, guys, because dating is not just no food and sex. And that's what we boiled it down to, especially in the United States of America, honey. I mean, it's like you feed this woman, you expect she's going to give you sex. Some people only come for the sex. Some people only come for the food. But you ought to be getting to know the person to see if this is somebody you want to spend your life with okay so you've been dating him seriously for a year he says we've talked about marriage and we were looking at rings now here is the problem 
Don't you dare look at no rings, honey, unless first of all, you go through the wise courtship system. It's a three-step system that's going to help you determine the true character and true intent of your love interest. You, even in Christianity, this is the mistake Christians make, and probably anybody in religious nations. I've been asked to speak in uh, mosque and all of that um, for other religions, okay, because they have similar ways they go about with people meeting partners but this is the problem that we have we feel like the person believes like we do on the surface and the first thing we want to do is drag them down the aisle right but just because we're both christians don't mean that we're still compatible hello i said something good right there just because we're both christians does not mean we are compatible you can both be islamic you both can be hindu buddhist that doesn't mean that you're compatible it means that you believe the same thing but even saying that you believe the same thing that has many layers to it okay some of us are deeper in it than others and so we say in christianity that you should not be unevenly yoked okay uneven it's got to be even and evenly yoke does not mean just believer and unbeliever okay it means two believers are you on the same level we cannot walk together unless we agree we have to be on the same level that doesn't mean we agree about everything don't get it out of context what it means is that we're basically on the same plane same mission same vision we may be opposites but we're going in the same direction Okay, because when you're riding in the car and you're riding beside your uh, um, your girl, your mother, or you got a passenger that you take into the airport in your car, y'all may be nothing alike, but you're going in the same direction. Okay, so listen, um, we talked about marriage and we um, we even looked at rings, and I think that's what people do when they think they want to get married. The first thing they think about is the rings, the dresses you know, the flower girls, the catering, but no baby. When you're thinking about marriage, the first thing you need to think about is wise courtship. You need to get a book that's going to step you get because it has that three-step system and it's not expensive. And you're going to step through that three-step system because when you're thinking about marriage, what you really should be thinking about is relationship. Are we compatible? You don't start thinking about rings, okay? Y'all know I'm going to get into this real deep with these letters, because you're like, she ain't even asking about the rings and you go in it. Yes. Listen to what I'm saying, because what I'm giving you is wisdom nuggets that is going to really bless you and help you and get you past uh, things that most people get stuck in. Okay. And so then she goes on to say, due to certain recent events, I've come to realize that my hope for his, for his Christianity to go strong is probably never going to happen. Now, I don't know what these recent events is. I don't know if he went to the um, strip club. I don't know if he um, didn't read all of Genesis by her due date. I don't know what he did, okay? Because <laughs> that could mean anything due to re certain recent events. And I'm not trying to make light of it because maybe he punched your mama in the mouth. You know what I'm saying? And now you're like, no, nah, he ain't the Christian that I thought he was going to be. Whatever the case is, I don't have that information. So I'm going to have to move through this as best as, as I can. Okay. And so um, I've come to realize that my hope, hope for his Christianity to grow strong is probably never going to happen. Why are we hoping? Yes, we want to hope and pray for people. That's beautiful. We do need to do that. But when you are trying to connect with a partner for life, you can't be hoping anything. They either got to be there or they're not. Okay. You got to love them where they are, who they are at the moment. And if you can't do that, then they're not the right person for you. Because we don't want to get into trying to change people. And, and then, you know, Christian people, sometimes we can go a little crazy, honey. We'll throw them on the altar, sprinkle them with all this oil and holy water and smack them on the head and make them, you know, spin around in three circles, try to get them where we want them to be. They only need to be what God wants them to be. And everybody's level of Christianity is different. Because we all come into the faith, not, like I said, insert your own faith. We all come into the faith at different stages. And everybody, just like you have a baby, when you have a baby, the baby doesn't come out eating steak, okay? The baby starts off with milk and has to mature 
to get to the stake, okay? Has to mature to be able to walk, has to mature to be able to go to college. You don't just send your baby to college, unless they some prodigy or something. Most babies don't come out the womb and go straight to college. So just like we expect them to mature and go through a maturation stage, it's the same thing when it comes to Christianity or faith, any faith that you are involved in, they get in as a babe and they have to mature and they don't mature on your time schedule. Woo. If God doesn't give these individuals time schedules to mature, then who are you? In my he, uh, I kind of realized that my hope, my hope, my, 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 my hope for his Christianity to grow stronger is probably never going to happen. Wow, look, these are some God trips right here. Your hope and probably never will happen. Now you already got, you already got their life wrapped up. Ain't never going to happen, honey. Mm-mm. You're not God. You don't know what's going to happen, honey. He may, God may come visit him, honey. He'll turn around and have the greatest ministry and everything. And then you would be the one that's more of the neophyte than him. You don't know this. Okay. So this is the danger of getting with people that is not where you want them to be. Cause you're going to try to mold them. You got your own standard. And what standard is this? I mean, let me tell you something. I've been a, I've been a Christian almost as long as I've been living. I joined, I became a Christian when I was young, a child, and my father was a pastor. I'm a spiritual leader. Okay. And when I hear stuff like this, I, it just takes my mind back to people have this perception of what they think a Christian level is for their partners, their families, their friends. Well, the pastor do it like this. And the pastor, generally speaking, is spiritually mature and has worked to that level. And some pastors will tell you, I used to deal drugs or I was, uh, they may have been at church all their lives, but, but they was trying to get away from the church or they never read their Bibles or whatever. They're human beings and they grew to there. That's just common sense. Nobody comes out, like even when you get, you know, a, a doctorate degree, you didn't just get it. You worked for it. You moved your way up. You may, they may not tell you that they went to a community college. They were not college material. And that community college helped them. They took a lot of classes where they didn't get credit. They got zero credit. And then once they passed that class, then they could go and take the actual class where they would get credit because they needed remediation. They may not tell you that. Okay, if you sat down to talk to them, maybe they would share it. But now they got their doctorate degree. But we like to see people's glory without knowing their story. Wow. And I wish that we would grow up from that because what we do is we put people in a box and now we want to make people be mature on our standard and then say, speak into their destiny and say, they may never, wait, let me get it right, to grow strong and it's it's probably never going to happen. Now you can see the future. Now you can propel yourself to the end of the person's life and know whether or not they will ever be mature in Christ. There are so many people who are watching me right now said, if she only knew what I was and what God made me to be later, when everybody gave up on me, wow, I'm feeling that right now. I've heard plenty of testimonies where people have turned their back on them because they were robbing and stealing. They were under the influence of drugs. They were doing all this and God cleaned them up and they turned their lives around. Let me tell you, Christianity, darling, is much more than sitting in church and reading Bibles and quoting scriptures. You got to get that thing in you. It's about faith. It's about believing and it's about having hope and trust and faith in people. Let me, let me get on down. Let me get on down and get to the rest of this. It says, I love this man with all my heart, but I also do you. Cause now when we get this, but 
that cancels out everything you said before. Because when you love people with all your heart, the Bible says the love covers over a multitude of sins. And I'm not saying that you ought to be with somebody that's doing all kind of this, that, and the other. And anybody who watches my podcast or listens to my podcast, y'all know I come from various angles because there's so many of you guys listening and there's so many lessons I'm giving you on various levels because I'm trying to catch it. I'm trying to catch these different thoughts that are going on while I'm yet speaking. Okay. And so if you really love the person, you are going to be patient. You're going to be kind. You're going to work along with it. And you're going to know that people don't come out perfect, that people have levels to them. You could be at the top of the corporate ladder, honey, but you could be a neophyte. You can be a youngin. You could be green in the spiritual. Okay. Wow. I've seen people who, who got all kind of education. And when it comes to relationships, they are babes. And we still have to have patience and love for it all. But if it's not for you, if they're too beneath you, if they're too young, if they're too green in the faith, then you can, you can get out of it. You know, because that's what the dating is about to see if this person's a perfect match. But the worst thing you could do is to stay with them and try to force them to be something that you expect that may not even be the expectation of God. It may be an expectation because you saw that the pastor is here. And so now you think all men ought to be here with the pastor. He ain't no pastor, as far as I know. He may ne- never get to the point where he's grabbing your hands and praying over every little thing. Not that every pastor do that, okay? Because every pastor is different. But you know, there's some people in their Christianity, honey. You, 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 and I, like I said, I've been in church a long time, and I've been a Christian a long time, and I love the Lord and I have a great relationship and all. But you know, there's some people you go to the grocery store and they squeezing tomatoes, honey. They be done prayed over that tomato, and then when you push the cart down the next aisle, they praying there. See, that'd be unevenly yoked for me. And I've been a Christian a long time. My father was a pastor, but that's unevenly yoked for me because I got to um, go grocery shopping. I got to get out of the store, okay? I prayed before, all right? I ain't got to be keep praying in between all of that. And don't look, if you're going to get offended, just turn me off because y'all know how I deliver it. I'm going to give some humor with this stuff, but y'all know what I'm talking about. Some things work for others and other things don't work for other people. And I know, I look, I knows I know the Lord and I'm deep into the stuff. Okay. But some of y'all don't go to church every time they open it up. No, you do not. Okay. And my husband wasn't one of them type of people. And I was there a lot. All right. But I'd be doggone. I'm going to wrestle him down to the ground. Like you got to come every time they open up the church or you out of here. You know what I'm saying? So you got to figure out what is really important. But if that's important to you, then you can find somebody who won't fit that bill if it's realistic, okay? Instead of putting the person through, you know, all kind of stuff, you know what I'm saying? Because you already, I can see, I can sense a little negativity about this person being able to rise to an occasion. Uh, We don't know what people will rise to. We don't, that's why I, I'm, I, I'm always get a kick out of people who run after stars and kick the, kiss the butt of the president. And, you know, you, you kissing the ring of people who got money and, and then you just kick to the curb people you don't think is worth nothing. You don't know where that person will be in another few years. You may have to come to them asking for a job with your, with your hands out and your knees bent. That's why we don't need to treat people any kind of way. Everybody, somebody say it with me. Everybody has value. Mm. Wow, that's a salon moment. That's why I stopped. So you can stop and think about that thing. You don't have the power to speak over somebody else's life that you know for sure they're not going to be anything. Wow. Well, let's, let's proceed. Um. I love this man with all my heart, but I also need a husband who will pray with me, have a heart for God, who will want to go to church and make decisions by praying and leaning on God. I get that. I do. I get that. You know, we want that. We want somebody to pray with us and stuff, but everybody's not going to be, 
you know, a prayer, a prayer warrior like that. They may pray, but they're not going to be, you know, how some people get up, ooh, child, some people get up five in the morning and, you know, I used to kind of be like that, but then when I had my babies and they would be getting out the bed with me and stuff, I don't have time for that. But then some people will pray and breakfast need to be cooked. You know, some women trip up like that. They finally get somebody, but they have an um, three o'clock prayer. And then they'll pray all the way to about eight o'clock and their husband get up. I'm not saying that he can't cook for himself either, but you do have wife duties and wife is, is a ministry. And you done prayed and prayed and breakfast need to be fixed. Come on, y'all. See, see, whenever you get that offended and whenever you start getting all funny acting, you can't be helped. You can't be helped because until people are able to tell you the truth and shame the devil, so you can be real holy and lonely. Because some people don't realize being a wife, being a husband, that's a ministry, honey. And praying is good, but you got to get up off your knees and feed them children. You got to get up off your knees and go pay your mortgage. Okay, you can be praying and be out there on the street. Prayer is good, but everything has a season and everything has a place and we got to use common sense. But I, I get you on this. You want a man who's going to pray with you, have a heart for God. Um, but at the same time, when we get the heart for God, we can't read people's hearts. We can only look at people's actions. Okay. That's all we can do. Who will want to go to church and make decisions by praying and leaning on God. I get that. So if that's what you want, dear one, you should have it. But if he's not showing you that, then you're going to have to move on. You said, we have talked about this and why my needs and what my needs are. Can I stop right there? We have talked about this. First of all, you've talked about this. You don't need to talk about it more than three times. You should be able to make a decision after that. After that, you're just a nag. You're just a problem. But here we go. We have talked about this and what my, my needs are. Did you talk about what his needs were too? We talked about what your needs are, but did you talk about what his are too? If that's what y'all gonna be a couple, then you need to talk about his needs and you need to talk about your needs. Because if we just talking about your needs, honey, you just trying to control. Okay. We have talked about this and what my needs are, but he's not sure if he will get there. And if he's not sure and you can't love him where he is at this moment, then you need to move on. Because we can't force, we cannot change people. Only God can change the hearts and minds of men. Only God can do that. You cannot do that. You can stand on your head. You can hold your breath till you turn blue. You can, you can um, go to the farthest part of the world, but you can't do that. Only God can change the hearts and minds of men. Do I hold, don't, do I hold on and hope through my actions in life? He will learn how to walk with God fully, or should I let him go and try to find someone else? Okay. First of all, I'm going to answer that, but let me just, let me just address this part. Do I hold on and hope through my actions in life? He will learn how to walk with God fully. Um, now I'm just going to assume that you've seen some stuff that's kind of obvious that he's not walking with God fully. And I'm just going to make the assumption that you are not assuming because, you know, sometimes people will do that too. They'll assume that you're not walking with God fully because they saw a bad day with you. You know what I'm saying? Because see, God forgives all if we ask them. But man, they we, they remember everything. They remember and they and they got it in any mind. You can't possibly be a Christian if you did that. You know what I'm saying? People make mistakes. People make ridiculous mistakes. The same Bible that you read in what did David do? He did like three levels of mistakes in one like section of the, the one section of this Bible. He just bloop. You know how sometimes you just sin and you just be rolling with the sin. He rolled with the sin. And yet he still had a connection with God. He asked for forgiveness. 
and he moved on. So we have to like really be kind of careful with that. Okay. About whether somebody is fully now, if they're constantly doing some stuff, you know, of course, you know, you may be like, um, no, I can't roll with that. All right. Cause I'm on this level and I'm trying to move on and I'm trying to do what's right. I get you. Okay. And the reason why I'm kind of like hitting it from both sides is because sometimes people tell you some stuff, but they're not going to tell you everything that they're being controlling and they got this list and you got to do, if you don't do that, you're going to hell and all this kind of, you know, all kind of weird stuff that people have in their minds when it comes to religion. All right. But at the same time, they could be a person that totally is right. Like this person is doing some stuff that, mm -mm, and you need to move on. But I have a feeling sometimes that it's not the latter because when it is the latter, where they're doing some stuff that's obvious, you would be gone. But when you start hemming and hawing and you're not real sure and stuff, then that means that there's some stuff that you might be adding to the mix that's not necessary. I, I don't want to get into that right now, but y'all know what I'm saying. You know, when people are doing something flat out wrong, you don't have no problem stepping off. See, oh, that's wrong. Uh-uh. I ain't put the, if they're doing something illegal, oh, no, I ain't going to collect with that. Bye, I'm out of here. But when you, when you add and stuff, you know, you ain't praying five times a day. You ought to be praying five times a day. You adding that stuff, it ain't even in the Bible. You know what I'm saying? It ain't even necessary. You gonna add that because you that's your definition of holy. Then that's when you say, well, should I be with them or should I leave them? You know, you start getting kind of, but check that, check it. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and answer this question. You know, do I hold on and hope through my actions in life, he will learn how to walk with God fully or should I let him go and try to find someone else? Well, darling, from what you told me, you ought to let him go and find someone else because he has the right to live his life. He has the right to go through his journey with God. And if you can't be by his side and encourage him and navigate through, through with him, then find somebody else. And listen, ain't, no, ain't nobody going to hate on you for that. You know what I'm saying? But the hateration comes when you start forcing him to be something that he's not ready for. And I, I pray that everybody be ready. I pray that everybody be ready, but I can't force everybody to be ready. I can't force it. Look, even with my own children, like as they, they're young adults and one moved out, whatever, he's making his own decision. He pays his own rent. He does his own thing. And I sometimes will remind him and say, hey, well, you know, when you're a Christian, you do such, that, and the other, but I can't sit here and force, force him to do anything. And that's my own child. He's grown. I can't force him to just you. How are you going to take somebody else's child? How are you going to take some, somebody who someone else raised and they got all the way up to an adult and now you want to force them to be something you want, which may be right and it may not be right. So darling, if you have expectations, um, first of all, whether they be right or wrong, you need to move on. But I do encourage you to look at yourself and make sure that's why I added all this extra stuff. And we went in and out with this question because I want you and all the listeners to really look at yourself. And if you don't get anything else out of this broadcast, know that we cannot change anybody. We can't do it. When they become full grown adults, when you got them as a child, you can mold them. You can teach them almost anything and work with them. But honey, once they become adults, you cannot. The only person who can change them is God. And God is such a gentleman that he's not going to be um, forcing you to be a certain way. He'll present himself. He'll show himself. If you ask him to come, he'll, he'll come and show himself, reveal things to you. But um, he's not going to wrestle you down to make you one way or the other. He gives you a free will. Okay. And if God gives free will, who are you not to give somebody else the opportunity to have the freedom to be whoever God has designed them to be? And if they decide to go against God's will, they have the freedom to do that too. It's not a wise choice, choice but it is their choice. 
Well, I got to go, but I can be visited on the web at www.wisecourtship.com. I'm on social media just about everywhere as Wise Courtship or Tony Henderson Mayers. All you have to do is Google me. Just know that I love you and there's nothing you can do about it. And remember, I help you detect a lover worth living with. Bye. Hey, thanks a lot for watching my video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'm going to try to upload videos as much as possible. So make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. Take care. Are you subscribed to the Wise Courtship Philosophy? Then you need to get your Wise Courtship gear at the Wise Courtship store. Go to bit.ly forward slash Wise Courtship store. All the letters are lowercase. They make amazing gifts from children, adults, men and women, jewelry, hats, cell phone cases, t-shirts, and more. Represent Wise Courtship by going to bit.ly forward slash Wise Courtship Store.